what would you consider a superstar in the NBA? There are many different opinions and the definition between superstar and star, I think there is a big defining difference. A star is a player who can be the best player on the team. Uh, there's some star players who are number two option, including Jalen Brown. Any guys that I would say are within that top 25 area, or there's some few exceptions that you can make, maybe not directly in the top 25, but can still impact the ball maybe defensively and are a great passer. There's a few guys in that area, but superstar, I think there are a very few amount of players in the NBA who are superstars. And my definition of a superstar is a guy who can lead a team to a championship being the best player on the team. Now you can look at this throughout history and there's obviously a bunch of answers that you can go with Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, all being able to lead teams to a championship and win. Some other cases too, where we saw Kevin Durant and Steph Curry team up, where Kevin Durant was the best player on that team. But obviously we've seen Steph Curry can still win without Kevin Durant, but Kevin Durant hasn't really been able to win without Steph Curry. Though, I still think Kevin Durant could still lead a team to a championship. I would consider him a superstar. Jason Tatum is the one I want to talk about. I don't think Jason Tatum is a superstar. And that statement may stir up a lot of people. A lot of people may be mad by that. But I don't think Jason Tatum can lead a team to a championship. And we've seen that right now. Watching these playoffs, he's had great games. Obviously, the 51-point game in Game 7 but the inconsistency is plaguing him. And the way that he plays is not helping him at all. I do think Jason Tatum can blossom into a superstar. And I know you're probably watching this saying, well, he was a top five vote getter in the NBA. Uh, he ended up in fourth in MVP voting and he was one of the best players in the league. That doesn't make him a superstar in my opinion. Like I said, another guy that's up there, I think Luka Doncic, if we're gonna talk about Jason Tatum not being a superstar, I don't think Luka's at that point either. I don't think either of these guys could lead a team to a championship. But I want to talk specifically about Tatum, and I want to give you my opinions on why I don't think he's a superstar, but he has the potential to be. And I think that's why it's frustrating for a lot of NBA fans, and especially Celtics fans, being able to watch a guy who's so good, but not be able to get it done in the moments. So let's take a deep dive into why I don't think Jason Tatum is a superstar and what the Celtics can do to get back into the NBA Finals as they are losing in the Conference Finals against the Heat and they haven't been able to get over that hump yet. The main issue with Jason Tatum is his three-point percentage and his effectiveness. He shot 35% from three this season. It wasn't even top 100 out of eligible players, and he's been adding volume and decreasing effectiveness over the past few seasons. Since 2019-2020 season, he has increased his attempts per game and his percentage has decreased from 40% to 35%. Now, 35% isn't terrible, but when you're shooting nine threes a game and increasing your volume every year and your effectiveness and percentage is going down, it's definitely something to look at. He's not a three-point shooter, but it feels like he's forcing his way into those shots. And we saw in game six against the Sixers when he was terrible going into the fourth quarter obviously he was amazing in the fourth quarter but going into the fourth quarter when he just couldn't buy a bucket it seems like he goes into this flow state where he just starts chucking up threes because he dribbles the clock down and he ends up taking a step back three now he's one of the best slashers in the league and you could argue he is I mean top three or top five he's up there with guys like Giannis who are able to get to the rim so effectively and he has an average three-point shot but he's trying to be someone that he's not he's trying to become this elite three-point shooter and he's trying to work his way into the mid-range when he could just slash obviously he doesn't need to slash every single possession but if he gets double teamed driving to the rim he has the shooters on the outside they've built this team around that so it just it's interesting to look at him why he takes so many threes per game obviously you don't want him to stop shooting the threes and lower his confidence but he can ease off it a little bit you don't need him taking as many as he does per game i know he's shooting and putting up 30 points per game this year but if he sticks to the player that he is not the guy he wants to be he will be able to be one of the best players in the league he is an elite slasher and he's settling for shots that he shouldn't be taking especially with the way this team is set up 
and having the shooters on the outside, having Jalen Brown on the outside too. And it reminds me of a guy who obviously he wants to be, he wants to be Kobe Bryant, putting up all these shots too. And Tatum is not a bad three point shooter, but he's average and he should be taking the good percentage shots. And that's when he can be one of the best players in the league. When he gets hot from three, he's hard to stop. But when he's in a slump, he can really get in a slump. Another aspect that I wanna talk about with Jason Tatum is the dynamic between him, Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart. And it seems like he isn't the leader of the Celtics team. And I don't think that's his fault. I'm not going to blame it all on him. But it reminds me a lot of Joel Embiid. And I'm a Sixers fan, so, I mean, I'm not bashing on these players, but I'm just saying it's obvious to see that both of these players aren't really the leaders of their team, even though they're the best player. And sometimes that's just how it is. I think Tatum can evolve into a leader, but especially in the Boston system with Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart. It just seems like Tatum isn't the guy who's really talking every single possession Marcus Smart is. And that's just kind of how it's been. There are some reports after game two that Jalen Brown asked Coach Missoula if he could guard James Harden after Harden cooked Marcus Smart in game one. Missoula told Brown to ask Marcus Smart and it was kind of alluded that he would make the decision and not Missoula, that Jalen Brown would have to ask Marcus Smart if he could guard James Harden. Now, all of this, like I said, isn't Tatum's fault, and I'm not saying he doesn't have the leadership role, but the dynamic is very interesting. And especially if Jalen Brown leaves, would Tatum be able to step up? And it seems like no one really wants to step on that foot of Marcus Smart. We know everything that happened in the bubble too, with throwing chairs and everything. We've heard so many reports of this dynamic between Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum. And I'm not really sure if there's really this clear cut leader because it seems like Marcus Smart wants to be the leader, but obviously Jason Tatum is the best player on the team and everyone knows that. So it's just interesting to look at that dynamic. The main question among Celtics fans and NBA fans overall is what is going to happen with Jalen Brown now? The gap between Tatum and Jalen Brown seems to be closing every game we watch. Jalen Brown has been able to be more consistent than Tatum in numerous instances, but Tatum goes on these stretches where he can be the guy and score. But we also see slumps like we saw in last year's finals and this year's series versus the Sixers. We know the stats about how bad Tatum was in the first quarter. 0 for 19 in game 4, 5, and 6. One of the worst, if not the worst, stretch we've ever seen in the playoffs from a star player. Game 6 was no exception as he put up 3 points in the first 3 quarters with only one field goal made going 1 for 13. But then he still has the confidence to shoot in the 4th quarter, drops 16 points, 4 threes in the 4th to win the game, and then goes and drops 51 in the greatest game 7 performance that we've ever seen. He can be the best player in the world one day, but be ready to join Dwight Howard the next. That's the issue. The inconsistency is historical, and that's why there's doubts amongst fans. If he stuck to what he was good with, he would in turn be undoubtedly one of the best players in the world, humbly, like he said. Now, losing to the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals, there's a lot of questions plaguing the Celtics. The main one, where does Jalen Brown go? He's a guy where he could be a number one option on teams. And I mean, looking at him, we don't know what he thinks, but watching Tatum's inconsistency, he could also be thinking this. Do you sign him to the max though and keep the duo together or does he walk? If he does, who would Tatum's running mate be? Because without Brown, this team falls off a good amount, I would say. They do have depth, but in a league where you need two superstars to win, it's really hard. If Brown and Tatum got so close so many times but couldn't get it done, who is the guy that could get them over the hump? This is now the fourth time that they've reached the conference finals and have only advanced to the finals once where they lost to the Warriors. Who fits this team next to Jason Tatum that is at the same level or better than Jalen Brown? The answer, not many. If this is the year that Dame wants out, that's an option, but with Jalen Brown's development to an arguably top 20 player, the number of guys diminishes as position-wise limits this too. Some names floating around the season were Cat, DeRozan, Zach Levine, but do the Celtics really find interest in some of these guys, especially a guy like Cat, where you already have Al Horford and Rob Williams? DeRozan, interesting name, Zach Levine too, but 
do you go back and pursue a guy like Kyrie Irving who's going to be a free agent I know that kind of ended bad and some Celtics definitely wouldn't want to see him back on the team so I think that one's a little more off the table but it's still an option the Celtics could also look for depth instead of a star, but many say that Boston is already one of the deepest teams in the league, and if you couldn't get it done with a top two duo, I would say there's a lot of duos out there, but a lot of people would argue that this is a top two duo. I would say top five at least. If you couldn't get it done with them and one of the best bench depths in the league, how do you replace Jalen Brown if he leaves? Could Jason Tatum just end up being this star player that we've seen and kind of be that Luka type player where he's putting up 35 points per game and kind of surround the team with a bunch of shooters to get it done? There's a lot of questions going into this offseason. Like I said before, I don't think Jason Tatum's a superstar. I don't think he can lead a team to the finals, but I do think he can develop into that. He is one of the most talented players in the league, and if he can stick to what he's good at and not pretend to be a player that he's not, I think the Celtics can get over the hump eventually with Jason Tatum. But he needs to figure this out, and this team needs to either keep Jalen Brown or find a good replacement for him.